Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and uh, before we get stuck in uh, I'd just like to say um, thank you very much for everybody who has taken part in entering the Missing Brolly competition and um, good luck to everybody and uh, I will reveal the winner next Friday so if you haven't um, entered the competition and uh, you want to take part please do so um, all you have to do is just guess which room the umbrella is lost in at the moment you're allowed two guesses and um, good luck to you right so while we're looking at this roof this is what we're going to be doing to South Shield Station here we are at High Shields and this was done in the same similar way uh, but these tiles have a matte finish rather than a um, glossy slate finish which I'm hoping to achieve on the South Shield Station so let's crack on Right, so I'm just about to paint the gents floor uh, so that I can um, basically finish it off. So what I'm doing, I'm going to paint it white and I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did um, with the ladies. Let's just um, draw some squares on it. Right, so as you can see the floors are now being painted inside the gents and the left luggage room next door. So these rooms are the actual platform. So the next thing I want to do is, uh, now I've got the station back um, in place, I can now get rid of these horrible white lines all around the main entrance and uh, I'm just going to show you how I do that so when you're painting out these white edges you need a sort of a ready cream the white mixture to almost blend in with the brick colour um, it takes a little bit of red and a little bit of white, 50 of each, until you get the right consistency paint. And then as soon as you brush it on, you need to wipe it off just as quick. With a cotton bud. So if you leave it on too long, paint will linger and you'll end up with red smears. In some places it doesn't matter but if you're going to weather over the top. But um, so I'm not worried about that door frame because I can get that off with a little bit of thinners. And it's the same when you come to weather it. You just do the same. As quick as you put it on, get it off. Just like that. So I use the dark grey wash for the weathering. Um, but I'm only going to do the brick edges for now. So it's just the same as before. Because it sticks out further in the wall, we're going to get a bit of weathering on there. And it don't matter if you 
lacking it up too much because you can just work it in. it off the paper unless you, you want it to remain on the paper and let it just run down for like uh, watermarks and things like that so you can leave it on a little bit thicker if you want it's down to personal preference Right, so as you can see, I have made a start on the roofs. It's been a long time coming. Um, I've got a rough sketch here. There is a rough sketch. Basically, what I've got to do is make the roof in two halves and put some ribs underneath and with some joining parts so I can glue the two halves together. Because trying to make this is one roof is going to be quite difficult. You will see because, I don't know if you remember, it has three chimneys. One, two and then one here. Three. So I'm going to make this up. Three sections of roof. You'll see as we go along. So, I've already made one section which is this piece here. But I've now got a cut out for the chimney. So, let's go and do a recce. So, as you can see, here are the three chimneys. So the roof will come along and to this point have a right angle coming down to this corner and the same the other way. And then there'll be a flat piece which will come over the top and sit at that angle. As you can see, I've cut out for the chimney part. Um, but one thing I have to remember is this roof is not um, a square roof there will be a slight bend in it so I've allowed a couple of meter, meter, millimeters in the length and in the width so for for the curvature of the brick walls so I shall give this a trial fit and then we'll go and have a look right as you can see it fits in there nice and snugly um, but it's not fitting in too good here as you can see I've got to notch it so hopefully that will then bring the whole roof round and I've got to take a little bit of curve out of the base there of the roof just to follow the curve of the building right so as you can see that is a better fit now the gap is gone and I've put a little bit of a curve into the roof. There's a little bit of gap underneath the chimney there but a little bit of lead flashing would hide that. Right, now I'm happy with the roof. What I'm doing now is doing the laborious bit of marking out for each and every tile. Uh, the reason for doing this is because once I paint the roof um, the pen imprint will come through the paint and uh, show the tiles up. Um, I've done this on many a buildings and I still think it's the most detailed way of bringing the card to life. Every single tile has now been imprinted onto the card just by using the pen. So all I've got to do now is put two ribs in, roughly where I marked them. When I laid it on the rafters for the first fix. So I shall glue these on. Then we can glue this in place. Um, the rafters I've just made one more card 
and I've shaped them to suit the rafters that are already in place. So I'll just glue them on like so. And that will hopefully keep the roof flat this way. Okay, that's ready to glue on. Right, so here we go. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just using the PVA wood glue for gluing the roof in place. So I'm not using that quick um, rocket glue because it, uh, if it drops into the building uh, um, it could uh, ruin the floors. So here we go. Right, we'll just leave that to dry and just wipe off any excess glue with some cutting buds. Right, so now we move on to the second part of the roof. Um, I've taken some measurements from the back face up to the chimney, which is uh, approximately 62 millimeters. 62, 62, yep, 62 millimeters and 28.5 millimeters from the top edge to where the card is, um, right in that corner. So, with those two uh, measurements, I can work out the square to cut in the roof so the roof can sit over the top of the chimney. Um, I'll probably end up with a gap of there again, but I'm not too worried about that because the lead flashing would hide any gaps. Right, I shall now check to make sure my roof uh, panel actually fits. Um, so let's just give it a go, as long as I can get it back off again. Okay. Okay, I'm quite impressed with the way that that fits. A little bit long on the overhang here in this corner. You can see it's a little bit of overhang, but when you push that back, that's, that should be just about right, two and a half mil. Okay, right. Well, now let's see if I can get it off. It's latched behind the chimney. Right. I now have the panel ready, so I'm just putting some PVA glue on the rafters, ready to take the roof. Um, I've scribed it like I've done with the other panel, using a pen. So uh, hopefully this is going to fit. I'm just pinching up, putting some PVA along the edges where it's going to touch those beams, and I'll just use for quickness. I can put a tiny bit. the rocket glue on those bits because I want the um, roof to fit nicely. So here we go we have the other panel ready and we're just going to drop that in. It's got the glue on 
Oops, I forgot to put some glue on that rafter. Okay. Put some along there as well. Right, so here we go. Okay, that's there. Just got to take the rest of the glue off with some Q-tips. Alright, that was a little bit fiddly, but it's in place. And it's, it's looking alright, I think. We've still got the, the end panel to do. And obviously I've still got the lid flashing to go around the chimney here to hide the gaps. But on the whole, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Right, I went away for a little bit and I've come back and you've just caught me putting in the final piece for this roof. Um, this was a little bit on the tricky side to do. Now I've got to get the edges to line up. Okay. I just got to wipe off the excess glue. Right, so not too bothered about this corner here because um, we've got the ridge tiles to go on, and that will hide any mismeasures or inaccuracies with the roof. Um, I don't know if you remember in the photograph um, there's a little tiny bit of a ridge tiles um, up against the back of the chimney so I will add that as well. And here we are with the first roof completed. Um, complete with ridge tiles. Uh, the rich tiles I use uh, is what uh, you get with your mid calf kits. Now I've got quite a few of these, but I don't know if I've got enough to do the whole station. Well, let's just have to wait and see on that score. But if worse comes to worse, I can make my own up. After all, at the end of the day, these are going to be painted. So um, it don't matter if I run out. So. Yeah, it's uh, been interesting doing this roof because of the shape of the building. But that's uh, one down and... Oh boy, many more to go. From one roof to another. Uh, I'm going to start on the main entrance roofs now. And um, this is a little bit more complicated because this roof is tied into this roof and these roofs along here are tied into this one. So the one roof I've got to start with first is this one. Because when this one's in, then this one ties into this one because it slopes into it. And these roofs slope into this one as well. So I'm 
better off doing this one first and this one so if I do these two I can then work in both directions and then once that's done I can concentrate on the top uh, while we're here yeah we had a comment about um, how I'm wiring up the LEDs and what I'm using well I'm using a book standard uh, 12 volt transformer which you get with any LED strips uh, you can buy in the shops uh, I just happened to get mine from Lidl's and basically what I've done is I've used the strip somewhere else and I've kept the transformer and the transformer feed is coming into here and as you can see from here I've split up the cables into different um, feeds yet again using this terminal block and hence why my wires are going out to various rooms um, yeah that's how I'm doing this um, as you can see I've got massive wires I've got a wire here hanging out the side of the building that's going to be for the lamps that are going to hang down from the ironwork when I start that and this is the return for it so yeah so that's how I've done the um, supply for the building Right, so as you can see, I have now completed this roof and with it sloping away like this, you've got this roof emerging into this roof, like I said earlier. Hold on mate, hold on mate, hold on mate. You can't put the roof on yet. Oi, what's up? You can't put the roof on yet, not until you've hung me dartboard. What? Who said anything about a dartboard? Oh, go on, mate. Have you got permission off the station master to hang the dartboard in the staff room then? Oh, go on, mate. You won't know. Okay, I'll do it later. Right, as you can see, I've uh, hung that guy's uh, dartboard up in the staff room. I'm sure he was a scouser. Well, it's been a long time coming, and at last we're starting to see roofs go up. Uh, one by one, slowly the rooms are being covered, so there's no more temptation for me to add any more details. Well, <laughs> there's always room for more details. Anyway, I have positioned the clock tower in place, ready for measuring up on that final roof there in the middle. And that's where the video comes to an end, I'm afraid. So, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And um, see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.